Hey everybody, welcome back. It's the end of the semester for me, no more school, so I can start making videos again. We're going to continue and pick up where we left off with the monster battle logic. Last time we did the setup UI. This time we're going to look at the battle logic itself. We need to do this before we initialize the battle components. I, th I think this is a better order. Uh, I said last time that we would do this battle components right here, but we're going to skip ahead and do the next pin in the sequence, which is all of this battle logic. So we'll back up to initialize battle components in the next video. Go ahead and skip pin three, make a pin four, and we're going to come down here and start the battle logic. There's a variable that we need as well as a delegate, so let's set those up. Let me hide my head real quick. So down here in the lower left, I have a variable called turn stack. This is an array of the BP monster object type. You're also going to want to create a new event dispatcher. Hit this plus here and call it next turn. With those made, we can now proceed. I've got a function here. Initially, we're going to call reset turn stack as the battle begins. Reset turn stack's pretty simple. We're going to grab our turn stack. We're going to get our enemy monster and our friendly monsters. We're going to add unique for both to the turn stack and return. So our enemy monster and our friendly monster both have battle components, and from each we need to bind an event to turn ended. You'll remember in our code here, we created this multicast delegate up here turn ended. That's where that comes from. The event that we're binding is event check turn stack. This event check turn stack is going to check the win or loss condition. This win or loss condition is a check for win condition, which check for win condition is just enemy monster. Is it dead? If it is dead, we're gonna set the battle state to one. If it's not, we just pass through and is dead, the boolean gets passed through as well. This boolean comes back out. Did we win? If so, we just print on the battle text, you won. And if not, we're going to check for loss condition. Loss condition is similar. We grab the friendly monster and we check if it's dead. We take that boolean. If it is dead, we're gonna set the battle state to lost. And if it is not, we just pass that boolean out. That boolean again goes into a branch. Did we lose? If so, we're going to set the battle text to you lost. If not, we take the false and we return. So that's our check win or loss condition. We're going to check our turn stack next. Is the turn stack empty? If it is, we're going to wait 1.5 seconds. We're going to grab the battle widget and the battle text off of it. And we're going to set a new round to that text just to declare, oh, a new round is beginning kind of a debug thing so that we can see that the turn is going. We're going to delay again for 1.5 seconds, then we're going to call new round. New round is this event down here. We'll get to that. Off the false branch, we're going to set a timer by event, 1.5 seconds, and this event is called continue round. Continue round is going to call the battle text uh, again. We're going to set text on the battle widget and it's just gonna be three little periods. That's just to show um, thinking, I guess, is what I wanted there. Again, these are kind of debug uh, printouts in the battle text so that we can see step-by-step step what's happening in the round. Once we've set that up and the round is continuing, we're going to call the delegate next turn, and we're gonna broadcast on that. We're going to then proceed to a switch. Let's back up, however. New round, this is called again, up here if this turn stack is empty event new round goes into a reset turn stack which we called up here as well reset turn stack then goes into sort turn because our turn stack was just add unique of the enemy and add unique of the friendly so the order is not set up so sort turn let's take a look this is going to be based on speed this is our initiative so we're going to grab the enemy monster and get the stats off of our enemy monster. We're going to grab speed, and from speed, we're going to grab a random float in range between 0.1 and 0.2. We're going to multiply that value by the speed, 
and then we're going to take the speed and add to that value and we're going to pass it down here this is a debug print so we can see it the enemy initiative and a float we're going to pass that float in there so we can see what the enemy's initiative is we're going to do the exact same thing for the friendly monster grab the speed multiply it by a random float between 0.1 and 0.2 return that value and grab the speed and add to it. We're going to then print again friendly initiative float so we can see the friendly initiative. So then we're going to compare those values. The top one is the enemy's initiative and the bottom one is the friendly initiative. Which one is greater? Is the enemy greater? We're going to take that bool and we're going to pass it down here into the index. If it's false, it's the player's turn. If it's true, it's the enemy's turn and that's our state and we return it. From the turn state, we're going to set our battle state enum from that return value. And then we come back over here to call next turn. So we've now met between continue round and new round, and now we can continue. We're going to switch on that battle state, player turn and enemy turn. Player turn, we're going to set a timer uh, by event, 1.5 seconds, and print out a debug player's turn. Similarly, enemy turn, set a timer by event, 1.5 seconds, and print string enemy's turn. The events that we're gonna call are very similar again. We have an event player turn and an event enemy turn. On the player turn, we're gonna get the battle widget, we're going to get the UI battle text and the battle text, and we're gonna set it to choose an action. We're then going to grab the battle player panel and the battle ability buttons, and we're going to make them visible. For the enemy's turn, we're going to set the text to waiting for enemy to attack, and then we're going to collapse the ability buttons on our player panel so that we can't click anything. So that's it for the battle logic. We just set up the new round, uh, continue round. We have a turn stack and we order the turn stack. We then call and set up player turn and the enemy's turn. And we make some UI uh, stuff occur. So next time we're going to initialize the battle components. This is where the actual fight logic comes in. The, uh, the ability to dish out damage as well as heal, and the enemy AI will come into play in that. Um, until next time, drink some coffee. No, I've already said that before. What should I say this time? Be a good person. <laughs>